Hi, Sapdolf. What will we present to the adepts of SAP Magic today? O1. What is O1? O1 is a new large language model. It pretends to be a breakthrough. We'll see how it handles programming in ABAP. Let's find out if it is better than its predecessors. So this episode is the next part of a series of language model tests, isn't it? Yes, indeed. There are already three videos on the channel. In the first one, we tested GPT-4 from OpenAI and Gemini from Google. GPT-4 did quite well, Gemini worse. Then when Llama 3 was presented, we also did its test. There were a lot of code corrections, but in the end it also did well. We very much appreciate that it is an open source model that you can run on your computer, so it was a big wow. Then when GPT-4.0 showed up, we did another test. And it was a big improvement, because the program was fine from the very beginning, without any corrections. Yes, I remember. Hats off. The bottom line is that we have had a lot of progress in just a few months. Now it's been another four months and we got the O1. That's why I want to test it. I would like to see if the progress curve is still steep. What is the difference with the O1? From the very beginning, the problem with large language models has been that in simple terms, they tend to say whatever comes to mind without any filtering. Just a first thought. Mm -hmm. Here we have a presentation of O1. It changes the approach and introduces a chain of thoughts. As the creators suggest, it spends time thinking before it answers. A bit like a human being. This is supposed to make it better at coding, among other things. So is this a breakthrough? We'll see. The approach is not completely new, and has even already been partially implemented using prompting techniques. But this time, the chain of thoughts is implemented inside the model. And, in addition, these internal thoughts are not censored. And we already know that censoring and making models more polite makes them a bit dumber. But can it really help with coding? We'll see. Let's do a test. Will we give it the same task as with previous models? No, we need to start raising the bar. Since GPT-4.0 did the previous task in one shot, it must be more difficult now. Let's start with creating a context. Someone recently complained about the simplicity of the code, so I will ask for a correct and modern one. And what is the task? Let it be similar to the previous ones, just with additional requirements. So I'm asking for a report with a list of system users. What is the difference? I will ask O1 for additional functionality, which will result in the need to retrieve data from two sources. In addition to the columns I always request, I will ask for the status of whether the user is logged in. Also, I would like it to be possible to go directly from the report to SU01 to edit or unlock the user. However, I won't hint that it's about SU01. I'll let O1 guess it on its own. Quite clever. I hope so. I will just write that my system is S4 HANA 2022. But it is not. Well, almost. Okay. One more thing. The model. O1 preview. Preview? Yes, formally it is only a preview. What's more, the smartest model has not yet been shown to the world. See? It's thinking. Yes, it's thinking in the background now. This is exactly chain of thoughts. We are not able to see their contents, but we can read a summary of the subsequent steps of the process. Show it to me. Here it is. Okay. O1 makes sure the report is for the correct SAP version. This is important because of the differences in syntax between ABP versions. The source table was defined correctly. O1 identified the transaction SU01 and the need for editing very well. ALV will be used. I see that double click should probably start user editing. This is so quick. Quicker than I can read. Yes, and the code is much longer than in previous tests. And this time it is object-oriented programming. Wow, finished. Yes, it took some time, but it looks good. We have a nice summary of the task. Interesting. Supposedly, the lock and login statuses will be represented by icons. And double-click will allow you to edit your account. Let's see and copy the code. Copied to the clipboard. I can minimize the browser for now because I will have to log into the system. This is my new sandbox, the installation of which I described in a previous video. It's based on ABAP Cloud Developer Trial which is a free version of SAP. In Transaction SE 38, I can create the program code. 
I give it a name and click Create. Then I need to enter a title and choose Program Type. I treat this as a local object, because this is a sandbox. Now I can paste the code. The execution is actually at the end, after a class definition. It is the initialization of the LCL user list class object and the calling of the display method. Let's see the definitions. We have a public section with the method display. The rest, so internal methods, type and data, are private. Then we have class implementation. Display method gets data, including logged users. And then it builds ALV view. I see that the getData method performs a select from the USR02 table. Table and columns selected correctly. Later, the status of 64 and only 64 is distinguished. Not fully correct. Next, we have the getLoggedOnUsers method. It calls the thUserList function. I think from the current server only, but I have one application server, so for me it should work. Next, building the ALV view. I don't know if it's correct, but at least it's pretty clear. Finally, on double click method, SU01 is called with an username. Nice. I like it. It looks nice and clear. But more important is whether it works. Let's see. Moment of truth. Unfortunately, a disappointment. Four errors. One shot failed, but maybe let's try with corrections. Sure, I'll copy the error and paste it into the O1 chat. Oh well, the tedious work of humans as artificial intelligence assistance begins. True. O1 is the thinking party here, and I'm just doing copy and paste. Hmm. I guess we should start getting used to it. Perhaps. But note that in this case, the assistant function is only temporary. The future is agents. One agent will write code as a programmer, and the other will test if it works. I will become unnecessary at all. Let's wait until all the new code is generated. Explanation what was corrected. Comas were added. Well, yes, a simple mistake. The new version copied. In fact, I could copy all errors at once. But never mind. Let's test again. Again, four errors. Yes, I will copy all the errors. Looking at how many there are, I expect that several iterations may be needed. If it's still not perfect, I'll make some kind of shortcut so as not to bore the viewers. The first error copied. Let's pick the next up. OK, all four pasted. I'll speed this up. Thinking again. Keep my fingers crossed. Thoughts seem promising. Let's hope something positive comes out of this. The thinking took 69 seconds. Yes, and there are some conclusions from it. We will see if this is correct. Copied again. Only two errors this time. Yes, but nine warnings. Probably less essential, but error handling is important. Although here, it's actually one warning for different ALV elements, so it's fine. This can probably be addressed without any problem. But I'll just focus on these two errors. I'll now be speeding up the video heavily for future iterations. And two more errors. In fact, previously and now we have one error, but in two lines. Double mistake again? Yep. Wow, activation successful. Mm, let's run and see. Oh, a dump, so another failure. 
Yes, runtime error when collecting list of logged users. We need to copy something and inform O1. Maybe the part called error analysis. A lot of these mistakes, but I think we are moving forward. Yes, slowly forward. It's a bit like our first experiments a few months ago. Yes, only the task is more difficult. I pasted the new code. And again, we got an error. Unfortunately, in the function call th user list, which O1 corrected in the previous iteration. This does not look good. Well, it doesn't. I wonder if there is still a chance for success. I believe so, but let's see. Another mistake. Again, an unknown type. Yes. It could review for itself whether all types are known. But maybe it's not that simple. You are right. And we have another missing type definition. Actually, a lot of these errors. Let's look this time, perhaps, what explanation O1 presents. OK, it started to respond. This is interesting. It seems that after the failures with TH user list, O1 changed its approach, but encountered more problems. As a result, it is now changing it again to something a little less elegant, but perhaps effective. It will do a select from the USR41 table. Let's see if it works. It can work. But O1 again made a mistake in the passage it just changed. It needs to be more careful. OK, another activation. It looks promising. Yes, just warnings. The ones we didn't address. Never mind. I want a working prototype. Success. Finally. I like this report. It correctly shows logged in users. Even the lock indicator is logical. Green means not locked. Yes, I agree. But maybe a lock icon would be more suitable. But it's fully clear. I think it's worth testing whether double click will allow you to edit an user account. OK, let's test. I think this is a pass. SU01 has been opened correctly with user selected. Yes, I can view or edit the user. Fine for me. One thing is still worth testing. No user is locked. Will the icon change correctly when we lock any account? OK, let's check. I am locking the user BW developer. It's the same. Because I need to re-execute the report. Now it is fine. Yes, the report is fully functional. I'm satisfied. And what are your impressions? As I said, I like it. The result is very good, but the process of getting there is far too long. Yes, indeed. The task was more difficult, and we got a completely different level of code than before. But there were still a lot of errors and fixes in the code, probably more than I expected. Yes, but you also asked for a correct and nice code. You got object-oriented programming. Previously, we had very simple reports. You have to appreciate this progress. Obviously, it's not just the functionalities and level of complexity that are different. Just look at the length of the code. It's also important to remember that this is ABAP. There are not that many quality and well-described programs available to the public. I believe that learning to code in Python or another popular language is much simpler. ABAP is specific. It's true. Besides, this is only the O1 preview, not the final version and the most powerful model of the O1 family. Mm -hmm. And our expectations are maybe too high. Maybe we shouldn't expect a correct program in one shot. Human beings are not perfect either. Cooperation of agents would simplify the process and increase satisfaction with the result. But a slight dissatisfaction remains? Yes, it remains. But let's wait for the new models. We have a good test case. I agree. Let's finish for today. May your tests always be successful, and may patience always lead you to your goals. See you next time.